people went and they sat down with couples who were newly married or who were just about to get married. And they asked them to talk about what they were doing, uh, the things that they had recently been through that were tough conflicts, and they wanted them to tell them how they met. So this is just regular conversation type stuff. But because they were scientists, while these couples were talking about these things, they hooked them up to a bunch of monitors so that they could measure their blood pressure, their heart rate, and the amount of sweat that their body produced while they were sitting and talking about these things. So what they did, they decided that after this study was done, they didn't want to make any judgment because they had no idea what all these results meant. So they met up with these couples six years later, and they found out where they were in their relationships. And they grouped these couples into two categories. They're scientists, so they weren't all that creative. Uh, one group they called the masters, and the other group they called the disasters. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's kind of, you know, they're scientists, you got to give them a break. So once they did that, they found that these masters, they were people who were in healthy relationships six years later, who had a deep respect and love for one another. And the people that were in this disaster category, some of their marriages had actually already ended by six years after the first time they met them. Some of them were just in really dysfunctional situations. They didn't get along. They didn't respect and appreciate each other. And so knowing what group each of these couples fell into, they went back and studied all the tests that they did about their blood pressure and their heart rate and the sweat they were, their bodies were producing. And they found that the people who were sitting right next to each other, they couldn't tell from talking to them and looking at them, but they found that the people who were in this category of disaster while they were sitting next to this person they were about to marry or they had just married, even though they looked calm, they looked regular on the outside, inside, their bodies were in fight or flight mode. They were sweating way more than the other people. Their heart rate was elevated. Their blood pressure was through the roof because even though they were just sitting having a conversation, they were ready to be attacked at any moment by this person who they were about to devote their life to. And they were ready to attack back if they needed to. And what they found is that because their, their heart rates were elevated, they were a lot more likely to be aggressive. And so after they found this out, they decided, okay, well, that's kind of helpful, but it doesn't exactly tell us how couples get to this spot in their relationship. So they set up this little bed and breakfast type place, and they told people they were subjects of the experiment, but they let couples come and stay there, and they watched how they interacted with each other, whether it was while they're making breakfast, sitting there having a cup of coffee, reading a book, looking out at the nature, whatever they were doing, the scientists were there, and they're taking notes, and they're observing. And what they found is the people whose relationships were healthy, who were in this master category, they found that when one spouse would try to get the other one's attention, whatever it was about, they gave an example of like one guy, he really loved uh, watching and, and photographing birds, and they were sitting there reading a book, and he looked out the window, and he's trying to tell his wife about this bird. And she had a choice to either do what all of us have the choice of, hey, I'm not really interested in birds, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, right? Or just totally ignore the guy. Or she could say, hey, birds aren't really my thing, but yeah, let's take a look at it together. And they found that the biggest thing that separated these couples, the masters, the healthy relationships, 87% of the time when one of the couples made a bid for the other's attention, their spouse or their partner gave them their attention and was excited to engage in what they wanted to talk about. The disasters over here only 33% of the time. And most of you, like we've been talking about, are in the dating stage or early, not even quite in that stage yet. But if you see yourself moving past that, moving into seriously dating, getting engaged, moving into a married situation in the future, what you have to understand is that at test one, 
this stuff wasn't really having that huge of an impact on these relationships. All these couples were excited to be together. They were looking forward to it. But what they found is that over time, just six years, these little tiny things that don't seem like they make that big of a deal were the difference between healthy and unhealthy, between masters and disasters. 